Hey, it's Art from My New Microphone. Let's discuss headroom and why it's so important in mixing. Now, the concept of headroom is fairly simple. It refers to the difference between the maximum signal handling capabilities of a system and the peak level of the tracks or audio signals within that system. It is often defined from the mix or master bus, although we also have headroom on the individual tracks, subgroups, and effects returns within our sessions. As an aside, many hardware analog audio devices define their headroom against a nominal level. However, for mixing, particularly in digital audio workstations, we will refer to the difference between the 0 dB FS and the peak level of the mix. If you're interested in learning more of the technical details and all of the different definitions of headroom, I will leave a link to an article I wrote over at mynewmicrophone.com in the description box down below. So with a focus on mixing, particularly in digital audio workstations, the importance of headroom is to avoid digital distortion at all costs within our mix. Having an adequate amount of headroom on our tracks, subgroups, effects returns, and mix bus not only allows us to avoid digital distortion for better mixes, but it also helps improve the entire workflow of the mix as we are no longer constantly pushing up toward that 0 dB FS level and risking clipping. If we begin our mix with adequate headroom on our tracks, that will translate to adequate headroom on our subgroups and ultimately our mix bus and will allow us to automate levels up and to push faders upward and downward without the risk of clipping any of the individual tracks, subgroups, or mix bus. And the same thing goes for sending off a finalized mix to a mastering engineer who would typically ask for about three to six dB of headroom on the mix. This is more so for convenience sake as it allows the mastering engineer to get right to work on maximizing the loudness of the master. All right, so that's enough talk about headroom. Let's hop into our digital audio workstation and I'll show you how headroom works in the mix. All right, here we are inside of Logic Pro to talk about Headroom. And in this session, I just imported multi-tracks, did a little bit of work, a little bit of gain staging, set up my routing, but I haven't started this mix yet. So the multi-tracks in this session, I wanted to use as an example, because there is not adequate Headroom to begin with on the tracks, which means that there won't be adequate Headroom in the subgroups, nor will there be adequate Headroom in the mix bus. So I'll turn this down in post to help protect your ears but I will play back a section here and we can have a look and listen to the headroom of the tracks, subgroups, and mix bus within this session. So you can hear that it sounds really distorted. It's quite a mess. And you can see that there are plenty of tracks that are very close to that zero dB threshold of clipping. We see that there's the snare top is at negative two, the overheads are at negative 0.4, the kick and snare and the perk section are just negative one away from that zero dB clipping threshold. And we see here that we have a kick drum that is clipping at 3.7 above zero dB FS, and all of these drum tracks that are being bussed into the drum subgroup are causing the drum subgroup to clip as well. We see here that we have two shakers in the perk section that are clipping and the perk subgroup is also clipping. Scrolling over, we see two guitars that are clipping, which is causing the guitar subgroup to clip. And ultimately, we are really clipping our mix bus and our stereo out here at almost 8 dB above the 0 dB FS threshold. So the mix sounds really bad, really distorted, and that's why. We don't have adequate headroom in our tracks, subgroups, and ultimately our mix bus. Now, most modern digital audio workstations work in 32-bit floating point, which is a little bit different than 24-bit. In 24-bit systems, we have that typical hard ceiling at 0 dBFS, where anything that surpasses it will be clipped. So if any track is clipped, that track will be distorted no matter what we do elsewhere in the mix. However, in 32-bit floating point systems like Logic Pro here and many other modern DAWs, we have a whopping 770 decibels of wiggle room above the 0 dBFS threshold to play with. Now we are still beholden to that 0 dBFS clipping threshold when we're bouncing out of our sessions. However, there's something interesting we can do within our sessions where let's say we have the guitar tracks right here that are clipping. We can actually bring down the subgroup so that the subgroup is not clipping. And then because we have that wiggle room, these tracks won't actually sound distorted in the final results so long as the mix bus isn't distorting when we bounce it out. So in other words, if we recorded something in 32-bit float, that signal could be clipped, but we could bring it down and unclip it, if that makes sense. So before moving on, let's go in and turn on our gain plugins right here so that we have gain staging. Let's have a quick listen right here and you'll see that things are no longer clipping and we have an undistorted version of this mix. So 
So as expected, we have our mix bus that is peaking at the highest level right here. We see that it's at negative 4.2. So we have 4.2 dB of headroom on the mix bus. That's a perfect amount to start a mix with, in my opinion. And it's pretty much where we'd want to be at the final mix before sending it off to a mastering engineer. Now, moving backwards from here, we see that the drum bus right here has just over nine decibels of headroom and the tracks feeding it are peaking between about negative 20 and negative 16. So we have to be aware of the headroom of the tracks that are feeding our subgroups that are ultimately feeding the mix bus. Over here in the percussion section, we see that the percussion bus or subgroup has about 11 dB of headroom and the tracks feeding it each have more than that. So we're summing all of these audio signals together and when we do so, we are effectively increasing the level. So we have to be aware of the different stages as we work toward our mix bus. That's one reason why gain staging is so important. I have a video dedicated to the subject. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box down below if you'd like to check that one out. But that's really the basics of headroom. Now, if we look at a individual audio track, for example, let's take the bass. I will solo the bass quickly. All right, now if we double click on the audio track right here, we can see a visual representation of the audio waveform here. Now in some digital audio workstations, we'll actually have dB levels where this 100 right here would read zero dBFS, and then we would have our null line in the middle. Logic doesn't have that, but we can look here and we see that the actual audio file of this bass is not clipping. We do have some headroom right here in the actual audio file. So if we scroll in, we can see that there is no clipping going on. And if we listen back, we won't hear any digital distortion. So we're peaking at about negative 17.7. So on this particular track, we have 17.7 decibels of headroom. Now, if we turn off this gain plugin that I used for gain staging, you see I'm taking away 16 dB. So if we turn this off, we're effectively adding 16 dB. Let's have a listen to that. I will turn it down in post to protect your hearing. So now we're peaking at negative 1.7. So we're very close to that zero dBFS ceiling and therefore very close to clipping. Now I have another gain plugin right here that I set up where I'm feeding an additional 8.7 dB let's call it nine for simplicity's sake, to this bass signal. So now we are going to get into clipping. Once again, I'm going to turn this down to help preserve your hearing so you don't have to do that yourself. And because I'm level matching it, it will help us really hear the distortion that happens upon digital clipping. So I'll turn this on and now let's have a listen to the bass, which will be distorted. So it doesn't sound great, that's digital clipping at work. And while this could be an interesting effect in the context of the mix, it's typically best to avoid clipping any of our tracks, subgroups, or mix bus by having adequate headroom. Rather, we can use clipping plugins or limiters that we're driving very hard to get that same effect and have the added benefit of having full control over the level of that track. If we happen to be clipping because we are going over that zero dBFS threshold of our tracks or subgroups or mix bus, then not only are we clipping, but that track will be loud in comparison to the other tracks that aren't clipping, if that makes sense. So taking a step back for a moment, when we are recording, we should be aiming for a nominal level of about negative 20 to negative 18 dBFS with a peak level at about negative 10 to negative eight to ensure that we have proper headroom going in. Unless we are recording in 32-bit floating point, in which case we don't really have to worry about clipping because we can just import the files and turn them down within our 32-bit floating point systems. So that covers headroom in the mix and why it's so important to avoid clipping and digital distortion. All right, I hope I was able to explain headroom clearly and concisely and that you learned about the importance of headroom in this video. If there's anything that's a bit fuzzy or unclear to you, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible to help clarify things. And if you'd like to learn more about mixing in a more practical way, I put together my free mixing guidebook that you can check out. It will be the first link in the description box down below. Click the link, sign up to my newsletter. I'll send that to you right away. This mixing guidebook goes through the workflow and the step-by-steps of mixing to help you make better and more consistent mixes. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe here to the Mining Microphone YouTube channel. And as always, I'll have another few videos for you to check out in the top left and right corner. So click on one of those next, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.